All right, guys, I am going to get really, really technical on you guys today, and I'm going to do a little bit of a bluff, aka bottom line up front. If you want the best sounding audio right now for your PlayStation 5, I think you're going to want to buy this thing right here. It's by a company called Shit, and it's called the Hell 2. It runs you $200, and I'm going to deep dive exactly why this is important, the huge gaffe that PlayStation has had converting PlayStation 4 audio to PlayStation 5 audio and a lot of technical jargon you probably may not care about. But if you are interested, all you gotta do is subscribe, sit back and get ready to be wowed by some of the craziest technical discussion that I think I have ever done. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into today's video and let's all start from the beginning. The beginning actually is way back when, in 1998, when the Universal Serial Bus, aka USB, created a device classification definition for audio devices. This was the one and only release of this document. It occurred in March of 1998. It was, it was written by the IBM Corporation and kind of co-authored by Microsoft. Alltech Lansing, Dolby Laboratories, Logitech, and Philips. And in this very meaty, meaty document, which I did read actually a lot of just because as an engineer, this kind of stuff really does fascinate me. And I think this runs like 180 pages, 130 pages. It's a lot of stuff, okay? <laughs> it basically boils down what their vision of USB audio would look like. Now, Fast forward a little bit to 2009 where the standard was rewritten. So I have this really cool forum post that I think summarizes it much better than I can. Understand that the uh, UAC, which is the USB audio class, um, sometimes people pronounce it UAC, just UAC or UAC-1. UAC-1 was the 1998 standard. We just looked at that. Well. I did, you didn't read the whole document, but this was the original standard that came out in 1998. Among other things, it standardized connectivity rates, transfer rates, speeds, byte limits, and actually what it would be able to connect to. Now, what happened was over time, and let me make this a little bit bigger, I apologize. What happened over time was we got smarter. So in 2009, the standard was rewritten to UAC2. UAC2 really did pretty much everything the first one did, except it made it more Windows friendly, and it also increased the throughput, and it also increased just how easy it was to connect. So ultimately, most people abandoned the 1998 standard and went with the 2009 standard. I say most people because Sony and Microsoft, the consoles at least, did not. So this is where it starts to get a little crazy. Now, what happened was, and look at this rock star here. What happened was um, Sony and Xbox utilized their optical input. And you've seen me do a lot of videos on optical inputs. Uh, talking about how to use a mix amp or a, a, a DAC, a digital analog converter. Basically something that takes the output signal of your console and gives it more oomph uh, to process it. It makes it cleaner, it makes it louder, it makes it more vibrant, and it also drives better headphones than what the standard controller ports would do. You remember that the DualShock 4 or the Xbox controller, or even the DualSense, does have a 3.5 millimeter jack in the bottom of the controller, which is nice to have because it's a very convenient thing, but it doesn't drive a big signal. So when you start getting into bigger, more performance headphones, like Sennheiser, for example, my HD 598s, it doesn't drive them as well as it should. A lot of companies came with workarounds for this, like my beloved Astro headset, Astro sells the mix amp with the headset combined in one. They are more streamlined, and even though it is a slightly less uh, powerful signal, it's tuned in a way that they kind of mask the fact that it's not gonna drive as hard as some of the other headphones. So far, this all makes sense because the industry standard of using optical ports was okay, and everybody had optical ports, and every performance DAC utilized an optical port to connect to your console. 
Well, then the world turned upside down when Xbox and PlayStation announced their next generation consoles and they decided to drop the optical port. This caused a lot of problems. And I've done some videos on, on this channel in the past where I talk about the fact that even though a lot of these DACs do have both inputs, they do support a USB driven input and an optical input, they were never meant to be used solely USB. The Astro uh, Mix Amp Gen 3 that I have is a perfect example of that. I was playing with it again last night, and when you tell, uh, when, when you try to power it only off USB, it sounds flat. The equalizer settings are not correct. It's not loud. It's not vibrant. You switch it over to the US or the uh, optical input. It is a breath of fresh air. The thing explodes. It is loud. It is crisp. It is clear. It sounds phenomenal and it works really, really, really well. So that's just more proof in my own little case study that uh, these DACs were not really meant for USB um, driven. Now, it does get even weirder though because there are companies like um, <clears throat> Creative that did create a Sound Blaster variant. This is called the G6. This is a headphone discrete amp that does drive um, most headphones pretty well. The problem with a lot of these headphones is when PlayStation made the jump to PlayStation 5 and when Xbox made the jump to Xbox Series X, they, for whatever reason, decided to cut out the supports of the uh, USB audio class, aka UAC, to standard. So in other words, a lot of these headphones were driven, you know, a lot of these DACs only use this standard because who uses the old standard, right? When a new law is passed, you don't go adhere to the old law, you follow the new law. When a new, when an upgrade to a, a road manual or, or like an atlas of like maps, is a new road is built, you don't go back to the old one. You don't use old, um, you know, everyone's going to IPv6, no one's using IPv4, and the list goes on. This is true with every standard. Now, some standards are backward compatible, some aren't. For whatever reason, a lot of these DACs do not play well with PlayStation 5. And you can get it to work by sometimes still bypassing the PlayStation audio and going through the optical port on your television or um, getting a um, diminished experience, you know, like with the, with the Astro Mix Amp, for example, it works, but not that great. But no product has ever really thought about it and said, you know what, we really need to go back to the old standard except for these guys. This just released, as I said, this is the thing I think you should get. These guys have figured it out and they do a really interesting post on the headfi.org and I know I've talked about that particular website for quite a bit of time. Uh, headfi.org, um, one of the uh, engineers there talks a lot about what went into the thought of this product. And they talk about the original variant of this product known as the Hell, which is now kind of like the Hell One. Um, it was one of the shortest lived products ever at shit. Um, it wasn't because it was a bad product. It was because we learned very quickly how to make it much better. And here's the two bullet points, which ties back into my original statement in this video. The original Hell One did not do two things, as in it had no optical or UAC One compatibility. We thought this was fine because we envisioned it as a PC gaming device and we found it um, that it works great in the office. However, it didn't work with consoles. Also, it had micro um, USB micro connectors, which perceived to be old, which obviously the standard is now USB-C by the way. Uh, the problem is when we did that with the original Hall Design, USB-C connectors were still really expensive. So now we've reached a point of sanity. So the Hell is the, the Hell 2 is the Hell, but it now includes an optical input, a UAC1 and UAC2 auto switcher, and US, USB-C connectors. And that is exactly what you're looking at in this photo here. So if you are using a console, and I don't know if they have a graph on there, I guess they don't. I know some companies like to show graphs of like how everything plugs in, but here's what this boils down to guys. This box is gonna do everything you need it to do and it's gonna be future proof for your device. If Sony ever gets their act together and decides to support UAC2, you're covered. 
if Sony ever releases a PS5 Pro that has an optical output on it, you're covered. If Sony does nothing and they say we're keeping it as is, we are not going to be um, using any sort of optical output, we are not supporting UAC2, we're still sticking to the tried and true UAC1, and we're only gonna be supporting our Tempest 3D audio engine via USB you are still covered. That is what is so fascinating about this device. And as I've done more research on understanding, as I've done more research on understanding how all these DACs work and which one, you know, what feature set do I like and why, it's become very, very, very clear to me that, uh, let me fix my beautiful hair for you guys. There you go, my big, my big moment. Well, it's become very clear to me that nobody's thought through this from a console gamer and a computer gamer at the same time, not the way that shit has. And it's a really, really simple thing for them to do to offer backward compatibility and the optical port. But the fact that both inputs drive the same, the fact that this is wall powered, so you don't have to worry about a diminished signal, is is USB going to be enough guts to drive the box as opposed to an optical, that has all been removed. This product is by far going to be the best thing. I've bought one. I can't wait to get my hands on it. I will definitely be doing a deep dive review for you guys uh, as soon as I get it. And I can't wait to set it up. Now, it is gonna require, obviously, a long USB-C connection from your PlayStation 5 console to the box. It also needs to plug into the wall. Uh, as well and then it uh, supports a wide variety of headphones it actually has a dedicated headphone and microphone jack so if you have an older gaming headset that has the two prong setup you're covered um, if you just want to have nice you know really nice performance headphones this thing will drive just about anything you throw at it it's a very beefy product i'm really really excited to get my hands on it last little disclaimer here this is not currently supported on the Xbox. Microsoft, in their odd, infinite wisdom, is not really supporting USB uh, DAC devices at this time. Now, could they patch this stuff later? I don't know the internal architecture. Maybe, maybe not. A lot of people have speculated it's some sort of weird licensing thing, but it's very odd when you go back to the original inception, and this is where I'll close out this video, of the Universal Serial Bus Class Guide. Microsoft had a seat at the table when it all started. And not only that, when USB, two, or when USB uh, Audio Class, AKA UAC, came out in 2009, it was primarily done because Microsoft had drivers for it and it was a Windows type upgrade. So this is a very baffling mystery to me why all this happened. All I can say is I'm gonna post a link to every single one of these pages in the description below. I encourage you to do your own homework and read for yourselves, but when I saw this and it clicked and I really started to understand DAX and realized that my PlayStation just wasn't being driven as well as it should have been, I realized this was the answer to my problem. So I encourage you guys to check this out, read for yourself, go through this entire long, I mean, I don't expect you to go through 9,000, what is it, 74,000 posts? I don't expect you to go through 74,000 posts, but read through this, understand how they came to this decision, understand the connectivity, understand that they have really thought through this in a way that nobody else has before. You will start to see people replicate this, but these guys thought of it first, and for that, they get my loyalty and they get my money. Hope you guys found this video informative. I know it went long. I know it went technical. That's why I did the bluff up front. If you got any questions or comments, leave them below. I will do my best to answer. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.